Hello, my amazing, beautiful, wonderful, fantastic friends. Welcome back to my channel. This is a video that I have been requested to do for years, I feel, and I've just never really felt qualified to film this kind of video. And I still don't really feel qualified to film this kind of video, but a lot of people have been asking for it still to this day. So I just wanna make a disclaimer at the start of the video. I am not a professional. I'm not trying to give advice. I'm going to be really careful with the language that I use. But just, you know, in case I slip up, this is not meant to be advice. This is not me saying that this will work, X, Y, and Z will work for you. It's just a simple Q&A where you guys ask a question. I answer it with my own personal experience and what I did to recover, basically, since that's going to be the theme of this video. And I have some Thai takeout because I thought we could kind of be like on a little bit of a date. I don't really have like a high enough table, unfortunately, where you guys can see the food properly, but I will show it to you guys and then I'll just be kind of eating it throughout the Q&A. So I've shown this before, but the first thing I got is sweet potato tempura roll, which is so, so, so good. Freaking delicious. And then I just also got some udon noodle stir fry. Just gonna be a like chill mukbang type of q and I I don't know if I have to add any specific trigger warnings, but this might calm off a little bit trauma dumpy, but it's hard to talk about my trauma without trauma dumping. So Mmm, so good. Mm. So I got all these questions on my Instagram. If you aren't following me on Instagram, make sure to follow me. I haven't looked at any of these because I kind of just wanted this to be a, a raw, honest, q and I actually considered making a script for this video, like going through the questions, picking the ones that I saw the most frequently, and then making a script so I don't mess anything up. But I kind of just want this to be, I don't know, just chill and not scripted. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna go through the two first questions and answer them in one because I feel like my method is the same. So question number one, do you have any ways to stop checking yourself in the mirror? And then question number two is what recovery method helped you to fully recover? And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm not saying that this is gonna work for everyone. This is just what worked for me. The way that I fully recovered is going all in. And that kind of includes checking myself in the mirror. I just stopped. And I know that's kind of coming off in this weird like, oh, if you're depressed, just stop being sad. If you have anxiety, just stop having anxiety. If you have an eating disorder, just stop having an eating disorder. And I'm not trying to say that it's that easy. Like it was rough. It was really, really, really hard. But I literally just had to stop looking at myself in the mirror and I went all in, which means if you guys didn't know, maybe I should do like a little bit of a starter. I have had every eating disorder under the sun throughout my life. I basically just kind of tumbled from one eating disorder into the next until going into full recovery. By fully recovering, the way I did it is I basically just went all in. And if you kind of want a more scientific look at what all in looks like, you can watch Stephanie Buttermore. I didn't do it as scientifically as her. I feel like she tracked a lot of her all in process and things like that. I didn't do that. I just kind of went, all in, ate whatever I wanted. I gained a lot of weight. I gained, I think around 35 to 40 pounds when I went all in. And gaining that weight was hard. Like a lot of people ask, how do you gain weight? How'd you get over the fear of gaining weight? When I was gaining weight, I wasn't over the fear of gaining weight. I was terrified and doing it every day sucked. And not checking myself in the mirror was really, really hard. Like not doing body checks. I used to do body checks 20 times a day, maybe even more than that. Like every time I passed by a mirror, I had to lift up my shirt and see how my stomach looked. But I'm a very all or nothing kind of person. I can't gradually go into something because if I, if I do that, I will stay in certain stages for too long and get comfortable in a stage that isn't full recovery. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing that might work for other people, but the same thing like when I decided to go vegan, I literally did that overnight. I went from eating animal products three times a day, every single day to not eating any overnight. And it's what worked for me. And I'm not saying I recovered overnight. I'm just saying that I decided to jump into recovery overnight. I'm not sure if that really answered the question. Mm -hmm. I just saw six questions, six questions in a row almost asking, do you think that you can truly recover like a hundred percent? And I mean, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> I really do think you can fully recover because I used to think that you couldn't. I used to think that there was no way to ever fully recover. Kind of like when people say, you know, always an addict, like if you're an addict, you're always an addict kind of thing. And the reason I thought that is because even if I'm recovered and I'm giving you guys advice. Because I'm giving you guys advice, it means that I'm still conscious of the fact that I had an eating disorder, which means I'm not fully recovered, I guess. I don't know. Or like you always have that voice inside your head, but I'm not kidding. The only time I ever even remember that I had an eating disorder is when I'm talking to you guys. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to discourage you guys. I'm not trying to like blame you guys. Like, oh my God, you guys remind me of my trauma <laughs> and whatnot. That's not what I'm saying at all. It's just, I never ever think about food. 
Like I used to think about food all day. Like it was all I thought about when I had an eating disorder, but I never think about food unless I'm filming or I'm like talking about it with one of you guys or you guys have sent me a message, which again, I'm not discouraging you guys from sending me messages. I'm just saying that if it wasn't for what I do, I would never think about it, which I think is what being fully recovered is. Like I never think twice about getting food and I don't have that voice in my head anymore, which is crazy. I have a voice inside my head that tells me other stuff that make me sad, but not food related. And that's something that kind of came more with time. I feel like even when I was pretty recovered, that voice was still there. I just like kind of got better at blocking it out. But now she's just gone. She's just not here anymore. She's mute. She don't got sh to say, cause she know I don't care. I definitely think it's possible to recover 100%. Three people asked me in a row, like exactly in a row, what brought on your eating disorders? What started your eating disorders? Why did you get an eating disorder in the first place? Things like that. And it's actually because I wanted to be healthy. I basically just ate junk. 24 seven, I never worked out. I drank a lot. I was like a borderline alcoholic at the age of 16. I was just kind of eating whatever the hell I wanted and whatever tasted good, but not really caring about what made me feel good. Like I never felt good. I was really unhealthy and not just because of the food I ate. I just didn't take care of myself at all. And I wanted to be healthier. And once I started losing weight and getting compliments from people, it became really, really addicting. And once I started eating healthier and going to the gym and things like that, I got this weird ego. And I'm not sure if other people can relate to this. I do know, like I have a friend that also has a past with eating disorders and she said that she went through the same thing. So I wonder if you guys also know what I'm talking about when I say you get this ego where you feel like you're better than, I don't know if it's better than other people or it's better than your old self. I think it was a bit of both for me. I genuinely took pride in starving myself. There was a part of me that felt like I was above other people if they got a burger and I got a salad. Like I was more valid than them. I was more worthy than them. I felt above them just because I was getting the healthier option. Or maybe I wouldn't even decide to go out. Like my friends would go out and have a good time and have fun with everyone else. And I stayed home and cooked my own food and went to bed early so I could go to the gym early. And I felt proud of that. I literally was proud of myself for depriving myself of happiness because that's what was going on. I look back all the time and I think how stupid I was being. Oh, Diana, good for you. Your friends are out having fun with each other and making memories while you're home with your chicken and broccoli. Congratulations. Also another disclaimer, I don't want to like offend anyone or anything like that, but I kind of wish someone was a little bit harder on me when I had an eating disorder. I wish someone was giving me like tough love. So I'm not trying to offend anyone and I'm really, really sorry if I do. So yeah, I guess it was like trying to feel better. It was a mix of trying to feel better, trying to look better, trying to be prettier, mainly for other people's validations, not so much me. I told myself it was for me, but like, let's be serious. You know, it was mostly for other people. I always told myself like, no, I'm doing this for me, girl. Starving myself before going out with friends, that was for me? Are you sure about that, sweetie? Are you sure about that? Randomly doing crunches in my bedroom before I took a picture to post on Instagram, that was for me? That was for me? I was really just fooling myself to make myself feel better. There's the noodle stir fry. Do you ever miss your eating disorder? My eating disorder has defined me for so long that I feel empty without it. No, I definitely do not miss my eating disorder, but I can understand where you're coming from. Like during recovery, I missed my eating disorder, but that was just, it's like a toxic relationship, you know? I do not, do not miss thinking about food 24 seven. I do not miss missing memories with my friends. I do not miss being scared to travel because I didn't know what to eat and because I wasn't able to cook anything. I don't miss any of that. Once you recover, you realize there was nothing good about your eating disorder. Trust me, I made my eating disorder my entire personality. So I can understand why it can be really scary to recover, especially if, you were, if you're like me, where your eating disorder is your entire life, basically. Like you become your eating disorder. You know, there were moments in recovery where I felt as if I was losing myself, because I technically was. I was losing my eating disorder, which I had made myself. But then you come out like a flower, you blossomed and you can enjoy the sun and grow. So no, never, ever, ever miss it. That bitch. How did you stop weighing yourself every few hours? Get rid of your freaking scale. Throw your scale away. I haven't owned a scale since I did um, like K-pop videos and things like that where I would do the K-pop diets. The last time you guys saw a scale in one of my videos was the last time I had it. I let it die. I let the batteries die. And then I just threw it out and I never looked back. Just throw your scale away. Why do you need it? Why do you need to know how much you weigh? You're not the doctors. You're not getting a physical. You don't need to know, especially not every day. Throw it away, boo-boo, throw it away. Mm. 
I'll cut out slurping sounds for people that hate slurping. I know a lot of y'all do. What was the moment that made you realize you really wanted to recover? You know, I didn't even know I needed to recover. I didn't even know I really had an eating disorder until I realized I want to recover. You know what? The fact that all of you guys acknowledge the fact that you have an eating disorder, you are a step ahead of me. Because I didn't even know that I had an eating disorder until one day I was like, I need to recover. I, mean, I acknowledge the fact that I had an eating disorder to recover from. And I don't want anyone to go down the same path I did where I had to go through something really traumatic to force myself into recovery and to force myself to acknowledge that I'm being stupid. But what made me want to recover is when my dad got uh, really sick. And because he's been, he was sick when I was 10 years old and he didn't even know. My parents both got sick around the same time. And then my mom passed away and then my dad told me when I was 18. He told me he had cancer when he was 18. So he had already been battling it for like eight years. The thing that made me want to recover, I you know, I never know, I never noticed that my dad was sick because he never acted like he was sick. There came a point where he couldn't hide it from me anymore. And watching my dad literally deteriorate in front of my eyes to the point where everything he ate, my dad loved food. You know, he's a New Yorker and he was a proud and true New Yorker that spent a lot of his life in the city with the pizza and the bagels and all the food that New York has to offer, which is a lot. New York has really good food. That's the one thing I miss about New York. But watching someone like that eat everything that he loves to eat and immediately puke it up, point where he couldn't even enjoy food anymore, really made me feel terrible about myself. I was doing what he was doing, but on purpose because I wanted to, because I wanted to be skinny. Watching, I don't know, watching him, my dad and I were doing the same thing, except my dad didn't have a choice. And watching this man that's, you know, like the strongest, I saw him as like the strongest person in my life. And watching him go through that, I, I didn't want to do it anymore. I just didn't want to. I don't know. Honestly, I decided to recover that night. That night I saw him for the first time puke his food up, like puke his favorite food up because of the medication he was on. And that's what made me want to recover. And I really wish it didn't take that to make me want to. Did you go through a binging phase? I did. I did go through a binging phase. I originally had anorexia and then orthorexia. And then I went back to anorexia, and then I had binge eating disorder. And then I went back to anorexia, and then I had bulimia. We moved on to if it fits your macros, which I don't know if you guys remember that. I feel like people still do it. I basically just masked my eating disorder with if it fits your macros. Because I was like, how can I have an eating disorder if I allow myself to eat this half of a Snickers bar, you know? I allowed myself one slice of pizza because it fits my macros, you know? How can I have an eating disorder? Then I went back to bulimia in a different way. I did bulimia in the sense where I would eat something, something small, and then I'd work out for hours, 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 hours. I would do so much cardio. I think I did around like two hours of cardio a day. It was insane. To basically purge whatever I ate. And then I moved on to a binge eating disorder with the purging cycle. So you binge, purge, repeat, binge, purge, repeat, that kind of thing. Years of my life I lost to my eating disorder. Those are all the eating disorders I went through before I decided to recover. How do you learn to accept your new body? I just can't do it. That's tough. That is tough. Um, I don't know. That's a question I really don't know the answer to. I don't know when I started to accept my body, to be honest. Once I started recovering and I just stopped body checking every 10 minutes and I gained the weight and then my appetite evened out. I also got a question earlier talking about extreme hunger, which I definitely had once I started recovering, even though I had like this binge purge cycle where, you know, binging, I was eating a lot of food. Even though that happened, I still had extreme hunger once I moved into full recovery. Again, I went all in and I know Stephanie Buttermore, she did a lot of like body checks and weight checks and things like that with her journey because I know she wanted to document it, but I didn't do that. I just kind of ate whatever the hell I wanted. It was really hard. I thought about my body a lot during recovery, but I, since I didn't check my body all that often, I guess it didn't give, I don't know, I don't know. I really don't know how I learned how to accept my body. It just kind of happens. Like it comes with recovery, at least for me. Which I know maybe isn't the answer you want to hear. I wasn't able to accept my body at all once I, once I gained like 35, 40 pounds, but I was also happier. I didn't love my body at that point, but I was happier. It was kind of like, damn, I'm sad that I gained 40 pounds, but I'm also doing all these other things and I'm happy, eating all the things that I like and able to go out to dinner with my dad more often. Maybe I was just too happy with all the things that recovery gave me 
to even notice my body and to like care about it. Now I've been recovered for such a long time. I love my body. We chillin. I love her. She does so much for me. What a queen. And I'm gonna treat her like one because my body deserves all the love. The same way your body does so much for you. It's like someone gives you present and you punch them in the face. Why would you do that? Because that's basically what you're doing to your body when you have an eating disorder. Like your body does all this good stuff for you and then you just are starving it. I think something to help me learn to love my body, loving everything that my body does for me and all the things I'm capable of doing. And then I learned to love just my body in general and think of it more than like how it looks. Because I used to be all I was focused on is just how does my body look? But now I'm like, yo, look what my body can do. You still get eating disorder thoughts now? No, I don't. I'm thinking about my eating disorder while I'm talking to you, about, to you guys, like thinking about my past eating disorders, but on a daily basis, or like if I'm, I don't know, I think eating disorder thoughts are more like, oh my God, look how many carbs I'm eating. I'm eating rice and noodles. I should cut back tomorrow. Like that's an eating disorder thought that I don't have. Now my thoughts are like, ooh, rice and noodles, hell yeah. Can you recover without any professional help? I think it depends on the person. I didn't get any professional help personally, and I've had friends that haven't gotten professional help, but I've also had friends that needed professional help because they're the kind of person that just can't do it on their own. They can't be their own motivation. And I mean, my dad was a motivation for me, but so was I. Like, can you recover without any professional help? Some people it's possible, some people it's not. So there's not really a yes or no answer to that question. Some people need professional help. They're, they can't do it on their own. And there's no shame in that. Did your hunger cues come back over time? They did. When I went all in, I had really, really extreme hunger and I just ate everything in sight all day. Like I would just rummage around in my cabinets, get some chips, get some granola bars, get some whatever. I would just eat it. Not in a binging way. I don't want it to sound like that. I was so hungry all the time. My hunger cues were all over the place. My body was really confused. Wait a minute, you're feeding us and then not working out afterwards? Like very confused. So my hunger cues were all messed up. But after a while, again, I didn't really like time how long recovery took for me personally. After a while, it just kind of mellowed out. And my appetite's pretty low now. Like I get people asking me all the time to do the 10,000 calorie challenge again, which by the way, I did the 10,000 calorie challenge. I mean, I'm sure you guys have seen, it's like my most viewed video on my channel. When I did that challenge, I had an eating disorder. I probably said I didn't, but I did. And the reason I was able to eat all of that is because I was starving myself. It was just one of those days where I was having extreme hunger, basically. Which is why I think I made it look pretty easy. But now, there's no way I could do that. No, no, no way. My hunger cues back where my body will say, hey, you're getting kind of full, or hey, you're getting a little hungry. I mean, I did a video not too long ago where I just like doubled my calories per day. And that was tough. That was hard for me. There's no way I could do the 10,000 calorie challenge. Mm -mm. I mean, I would attempt it. If I got like 100,000 subscribers, I, I probably would attempt it, but I don't think I'd be able to do it. And I don't really have like a desire to do it. When I did my 10,000 calorie challenge, I wanted to. I was like, yo, I'm gonna actually be able to eat food. <laughs> if I didn't have an eating disorder, I'd be able to eat all that food whenever the hell I wanted. And I wouldn't have had the need, like this urge to eat it all in one day. Do you miss your old eating disorder body? Oh my God. No, no, not at all. The thing is, is that body I got the most compliments on. So, I mean, I guess I like looked good in society standards, but I don't miss that body at all because she couldn't do anything. She was so weak. Oh my God, she was so weak. It's like, I was able to go to the gym. It was really weird. Like having an eating disorder while also being like obsessed with weightlifting and everything like that is super weird because I felt like I was strong at the gym, but then like walking up some stairs at my house back when I lived at my house in New York, walking up those stairs, I thought I was gonna pass out. And then also something I have like such a vivid memory of is sitting on the toilet seat and it hurt because I had no fat on my butt. And that body like got compliments, but I never went out. I've said this in a video before, because I lost weight for other people, for society to be prettier or whatever, because that was one of the reasons why I lost weight. It's like, okay, I lost all this weight, but then I can't do anything with it, you know? It's like, yeah, you're skinny, but what do you do with it now? Because I never wanted to go out. I never wanted to be with my friends. I was always tired. I was in a cranky mood. If my friends, like a lot of the time they wanted to go out to a party or go out to eat or something like that and to maintain my body or whatever, I couldn't do that. 
And the only people my body attracted were people that didn't really care about me and people that I don't want in my life. The people that were with me before I had an eating disorder, during my eating disorder, and after my eating disorder are the real ones. And the people that I want in my life, like those people do not care about my weight. They only care about my health. An example being my dad. He doesn't give a shit if I'm 150 pounds or 100 pounds. The only thing he cares about is if like, okay, are you not healthy? Like, do you not feel good? Are you unhappy at 100 pounds or 150 pounds? Then he's gonna worry. The attention I got when I was really skinny are people that I just don't talk to now. And like, thank God, you know? because. If the only reason you're talking to me is because I look a certain way, I don't want you in my life. Like there were certain people that never talked to me before I lost weight, only talked to me during my skinny times and then don't talk to me now. Why do you want those kind of people in your life? I don't, I don't miss my body. I don't miss my eating disorder body, my pre-recovery body. I'm not saying my body looked bad during that time. She looked great, but I look great now too. Someone asked, do you regret having an eating disorder? Yes. Okay, let's talk about that actually, because I don't know, people always say like live with no regrets, but I a thousand percent regret having an eating disorder. And the thing is, is having an eating disorder has helped me be able to talk to you guys and has brought me so many of you guys, which I really appreciate. But my eating disorder took so much away from me and I don't think anything can make up for that. Nothing can make up for the time that I lost because of my eating disorder. And as much as I love you guys, as much as I love having this community that is able to help you and it's, and I, I said it before, like you guys literally saved my life. You guys have saved my life and you guys are all so precious to me, but nothing will replace the time I lost. I lost so many memories that I could have had with my dad, like so many. And now he's not here and like, I can't do anything about that. And I really wish I never had an eating disorder to recover from. And I really wish it didn't take my dad getting so sick for me to want to recover. So yeah, I regret having my eating disorder. And I'm not trying to like discourage anyone from recovering because it's like, oh, it's already f or whatever. I can't change the past. I, at the very least, wish I recovered sooner. I told myself I would not cry. I am not crying. I cry way too much on this channel. Do you ever have the desire to lose weight again? No, I don't really think about weight. Like I never think about my weight. I never think about losing weight. I never think about gaining weight. I'm just kind of vibing. I'm just kind of living, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> like, damn, I'm really proud of myself. My weight's my weight. If it goes up, it goes up. If it goes down, it goes down, whatever. Do you have days where you still feel like crap once you've recovered? No, because once you recovered, like, I don't know what you mean, like feel crap, about my body or feel crap about like what? If you're asking feel crap about my body, no. Like, I don't know, when it comes to my body, there are certain things that I literally can't change. I've just learned to accept it. We all come in different shapes and sizes, yet we all wanna look the same. It's really sad. Did you lose your period? And if you did, how did you get your period back? Okay, um, I did lose my period. I lost my period for a long time. I don't think I had a period for two years, maybe. Was it two years? And it was when it was really bad. Like I kept losing hair. I didn't have my period. I was lightheaded all the time. It just became the norm. Like me being lightheaded was just a normal day. I got my period. I wasn't trying to get my period back. I honestly like hardly noticed I didn't have a period. I think I got my period back when I gained like 20-ish pounds or something. It started to come back. And it came back once and I was like, whoa, haven't had this in a while. <laughs> Let's do one more. Does it ever get easier? It does, sweetie. It does. Recovery does so much for you. It's not even funny. Like you don't even realize until you're recovered and you look back like how much recovery has done for me is actually insane. The amount of freedom you have, insane. And recovery is hard. Having an eating disorder was easy for me, you know, to just stay with what I was doing. Recovery was a challenge. The biggest challenge I've ever had to do really does get easier. And it's so worth it, so worth it. Like I would have gained 60 pounds if it meant feeling the way I feel right now. So, so, so worth it. Like when you guys watch me, you can get to that point where you're just kind of eating whatever the hell you want, going out with friends, ordering takeout, skipping the gym for a few days or even a week. You can do it and it will get to a point where it's just second nature. It's natural and you don't have to think about it. You'll get there. It's fun. It's fun. Not having an eating disorder is so much fun. 10 out of 10 would highly recommend. I'm basically done with my food. I think that's going to conclude this video and this Q&A, but I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. I can do part two, maybe, if you guys want. I got a lot of questions I didn't get to. Just let me know if you guys 
enjoyed this video and you would like to see a part two, but yeah. And of course, before you go, if you haven't already heard today, you are amazing, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, you are so valid, and I'm so, so happy that you are alive. Thank you for saving my life. I love you so, so much, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.